thank you for tuning in with Enchantress. That's me, the babbler. That's me on this evolutionary high rise of a spree that is evolutionary in every kind of way. What can I say? Why is that back over there? I'm like trying to like, the lighting is going bad now. Um, I don't like to be dark. Here we go. Alrighty, sorry about that. So this is just being done with my phone. So this is video number two of the first one in regard to the attempted explanation of what these videos, these other newbies of videos will be about in, in, um, in, on my YouTube channel. Because there's going to be so many different things that I talk about. Um, but this is one of them that, um, is being shined on to me to do um, and speak of so freely it's like think of it like a classroom of um, spirituality awakening to the senses that our human vessels experience on these earthly lands that may go unnoticed man because they are not being highlighted so i will be sharing many different parts of this spiritual awakening process that can be experienced by others and please bear in mind that in whatever ex um Whatever example of an experience I give or share that my, I may have experienced or may have come across um, others who have experienced um, on, their, on their journey, um, note that even though if you and I have a similar type of experience, no one experience is ever going to be the same as any other. And... We cannot be, see, I just received so many messages just for this one card flipping over. Um, we cannot be trapped in the spirit of fear during this unveiling process that is happening here. And we, and for those of you that are like the first liners that have gone through so many of evolutionary growth processes and many um, awakenings of your own spiritual gifts that many of you are sharing with the world or many of you are, you know, um, not. Um, there are, for those of you that are like that, there's still stuff here that should resonate and offer um, even just further insight and depth to your own experience. And please do note that no one experience is the same. It's just like when you do a general reading for, you know, a group of collective energies that will find their way to the message that um, you're channeling for that, you know, not every channeled um, general message is going to apply to every single body, you know, or it may apply to you at a different timeline in your life. But either way, um, these kind of experiences that I'm going to be sharing are just, you know, um, studies and observations that have been made over the course of years in my own reflections, introspections, um, journeys of seeking answers for many of my own kind of experiences. I remember, like I said, like, when I started to, like, okay, okay, let me check this out. Like, it's just like when I first started seeing runes. To see runes, I think the first time I ever was shown runes was through smoke. In smoke, literally. I blew out smoke, and when I did, rune symbols appeared in the smoke. That it was so clear Mind you, I didn't really know anything about runes up until that point. Oh, because 
of the effect of how clear the smoke showed symbols that for me intuitively receiving like if I can go back into that time line of what was going on inside even just my mind intuitively I was receiving that this is important and that I was prompted to look it up so I drew what I saw on a piece of paper and eagerly went on a Google search to discover that these symbols mean something and that's amazing you know but I have also experienced many things that I still have yet to find a Google answer for. And there are many things that I sometimes am hesitant to search due to the collective database of our internet searches that store and collect every known question that has ever been typed into the Google bar space and noting that there is a database system that gathers a lot of information and then there are persons or intuitives or something that studies that too and then sometimes new information is added to this collective database based off of the questions you pose on your search that may have not existed in answers prior to your own question being asked, which is kind of like scientists and um, and 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 um, and um, experiments. I, I I've never been okay with um, finalizing any experiment based off of the based off of the results shown in the experiment because the results being shown never mind that it has been tampered energetically with by the 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 experimenter <laughs> unless the experimenter is so like balanced in their free flow that they do not have a preference or idea or energy um, of what they think can can transpire from the experiment that is more dominant than the other to energize that into the experiments um, itself. You know that influences the alchemy and the makeup of the experiment because any experiment done to to generate a consensus or a, a, like a, a, an answer that will be scientifically like accepted and or proved um, is usually conducted by the person who poses the thing anyways granted so therefore energetically it's influenced by that person that is creating this to begin with but all information found to be understood in any dynamic is 
evolutionary in itself where all it takes is for a new perceptional view of the same idea of experiment to be posed that can create a whole other kind of result. All it takes is for the inquiry. That's why they say when you can't change the way something is, change the way you think about something. Same thing like with that. So is all science scientific fact fact? Like, you know, if you think about it like that, oh, let's think for ourselves, people. Like, never mind what you're told. I there's no fact in anything. Anything can change. Everything does change. Which is why when I was studying in school, um, psychology and all these kind of like Western practices of medicine, um, I was I would become so angry because of the fixed viewing or or fixed fixed idea notion fixed um fixed understanding that has been developed up until that point of something making it like fuck you freaking um making it absolute I was upset especially when I was considering um psychology I was like how am I going up to ever how am I going to ever work with these people to help them based off of this module that is so limiting to then diagnose based off of these certain understood symptoms or you know boxes of categories that everything gets placed in and here make you better that's why when I started um, at the New York College of Health Professions where I was studying both Eastern and Western practices of, you know, just, you know, energy work, body work, um, sciences and stuff like that, and medicine, I was like, oh, okay, finally, Eastern practices that, that um, benefit or that are targeted or geared towards healing the whole as opposed to just these pieces of parts that um, people tend to just superficially cater to because that's what comes up to the surface. So, you know, who has time to dig to the root? You know what I mean? So fine, granted, fine, 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 fine. So during these many years of just my own awakening kind of experience of um, being observer as well and just documenting a lot of things. Um, I have noted many different identifying physical things that do occur to us during certain kind of things. And um, it's kind of like lucid dreaming when you are lucidly dreaming right what's occurring on the most superficial layer of your own existence during the time of lucid dreaming what parts of your brain are being made active and lit what um, is happening to your eyelids at that time? Like, what state of sleep are you in? Are you able to consciously be awake during this lucid state? Like, you know, all these kind of things that can occur. Like, oh, my legs. Or just how about the people that experience that um, night, um, that, that the, the feeling of being paralyzed when they wake up from a certain deep level of REM sleep and then like you know because they're waking up from this state of deep sleep that 
their body had no preparation to all of a sudden be jolted awake so the body's still in that state of like paralysis because once you go into a deep leveling of sleep your body naturally goes into this protective state of paralysis that allows you to travel into your realms of dreamland without injuring yourself um on these superficial earthly lands imagine how many dreams you have why do you think when you are dreaming like uh that you're falling and you're trying to move from this state of falling in your sleep um you feel trapped or how about like if you feel trapped in one of your dreams and you're trying to move or get out or you're trying to hit something in your dream or defend yourself and you have those dreams that you feel so heavy and you're just like ah oh, that's dude Dude, the reason you feel that way, like if you want to be logical about the experience of those kind of dreams, okay? Even though this is not about that either, but since we're here, I'm just going to speak about it and just so that we can be clear about this, you know, um, state of sleep that boggles so many minds. Um, let's just, you know, add up one plus one equal, equaling five, okay? So if you're in this deep, state of sleep the natural chemical processes that happen to your human body on the outside surface of these layers of existing um, is that one of like coma paralysis it's like a natural shutdown mechanism that occurs inside of your body when you reach this state of sleep that um allows you to astrally travel safely if you want to look at it that way so if you ever notice those that do not sleep well at night that toss and turn and toss and turn and flip and flop and get up and then lay back down and have that trouble of shutting down a lot of the activity that is happening superficially to the physical layers of the body can't shut out the mental processes can't shut down the physical can't get to that state of REM that will allow you to get into that relaxed state of, of dreaming, of takeoff, liftoff. So you toss and turn and you have a restless, sleepless night. That happens. So those people do not understand the paralysis that can occur because they're not able to get there fine so now for those that have gotten there no matter what spectrum of the wheel you fall on whether you have restless nights often or whether you sleep like a baby every single night doesn't matter for those of you that have gotten there at some point in your life We've all experienced a deep level of sleep at some freaking point. Like, we knock out because that naturally happens. If we do not get the rest that we need, our bodies will do it for us eventually. So, we all have reached that state of deep REM sleep, whether you're conscious.